All right, welcome back to Live at 9, everyone. We're bringing in Tall Man Radio, Charles Edmond. He is the man of Alcorn, Vicksburg, and really just that whole region. He is the voice. And uh, the reason I brought you on is a lot of people hear your voice. They see you around the community. But maybe, you know, we want to learn even more about you. <laughs> so talk about your upbringing and how you kind of got into radio because you look like you could have been a former athlete when, you know, being almost seven feet tall. And, yes, he's in a chair because otherwise I would be looking so small today. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'm originally from St. Louis. Um, grew up in a sports town. Um, I'm a big Cardinal fan, and I've always taken an interest into listening to stuff on the radio. So that I didn't get a chance to go to a lot of games growing up, so I listened to it on the radio. So my idols growing up were Jack Buck, and I know Joe Buck, who works for Fox Sports. He worked in St. Louis, and uh, I just wanted to be in the radio. I wanted to be into, into the broadcast business, and when I was in college, I got a chance, I got a chance to intern at one of the best uh, sports talk stations in the country at the time, KMOX Radio. Um, and so that's how it kind of took off and I did my stuff at Grambling. I was a student broadcaster and two weeks out of graduation, Alcorn hired me and I've been there ever since. How long have you been at Alcorn? June will be 33 years. I mean, that's amazing. So, you know, if you've listened to Alcorn games, you've listened to Charles and uh, I just find it so amazing that you're able to do this for so long and you also help with Vicksburg too. Yeah. Um, Actually, my start with high school football was with Jefferson County High School really? in Fayette. Yeah, I did that. You know, Alcorn is located between Jefferson County High and Port Gibson High. So I got a chance to do that, uh, both schools. And then there's a guy in Vicksburg that runs a radio station, and he heard me, and he looked me up, and he was wondering if, you know, I'd be interested in, in doing Vicksburg. And at the time, I just moved to Vicksburg. So um, that's how the Vicksburg thing happened. I, I know you aren't from Mississippi, but just talk about just now being a part of this, being in your home. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. I mean, it's different than St. Louis. It's different than Missouri. It's, it's a little slower pace. You know, Missouri is fast paced, fast. St. Louis is fast. Uh, but, you know, just it took getting some used to, although being a Grambling graduate and Grambling State University from here is like two hours. So Grambling is kind of the same. And so when I started, and moved to Mississippi because when I left Grambling, I moved to Natchez. I lived in Natchez for two years. Um, it, it took a little getting used to being a big city guy, but you know, once you got used to it, you're you're good to go. All right, I got to ask you, state of Braves athletics right now. Um, what's your thought on it? Football, basketball, baseball, softball. You know, men and women's sports. Well, when I mean, you start with football, I mean, we're under a new regime. Uh, Cedric Thomas. You know, he's. He's the guy. He's he's the one that fans really love. You know, I got a chance to interview him a couple of weeks in December before he was hired as head coach, and a lot of people felt like he was head coaching material, just his conversation, his aura. He speaks the part. He looks the part. And when he was officially hired, I mean, that was the fan favorite. That's what everybody was looking for. And so he's hit the ground running. Everybody's excited. His passion, his enthusiasm, and I think that that carried over into the spring. I mean, of course, he had to hit the ground running in the spring, but I think we're going to be fine. You know, we open up with uh, UAB and Vanderbilt, and it's going to be tough to start, but I think if there's a coach and if there's a staff that can handle it, I think this Braves coaching staff can do that. How do you think the McNair situation kind of all went down? It's, it's, it was interesting. Yeah. I, I will say that, you know, for that three-week period in December, every day for me was like, is he going to stay? Is he leaving? You got a lot of text messages absolutely. from me, right? I mean, you absolutely. media people all over the absolutely. place. Charles, what do you know? Charles, what do you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I knew nothing. <laughs> and it was good that I didn't know anything. Um, but at the end of the day, there had to come a point in which something was going to be done one way or the other, whether Coach McNair, who, by the way, was terrific. Mm -hmm. It was terrific to me. Um, you know, my mother passed away a few years ago, and the last few months when she was alive, he gave her an autographed jersey wow. and a football. Yeah. And so Coach was really good to me and my family, so I had no, no problems with that. Whatever he decided to do, I was in full support. Whatever is best for him and his family, that was fine. And so it was just back and forth, and when the decision came and he left, it was unfortunate because I, I, as a broadcaster, you have to have those relationships mm -hmm. with coaches. 100%. And, and so, you know, any coach that leaves gets terminated, whatever the case, 
you feel that and because you just have those relationships. So when Coach left, um, it, was, it, was, it was tough for me, but at the same time, I knew that something better was waiting for him. And we all know what happened on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, may have been Texas Southern, maybe now we all know how that thing kind of <laughs> kind of played out. Yeah, that, by the way, that might have been even more weird and interesting than what ended up happening and the leaving. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it would have been, but it didn't work out there. Um, some people felt like that he would be sitting on the couch for a year and waiting for other openings. I, I never thought that because he's a relatively young coach. He's in his 50s, and so... I didn't think he would be doing that. I think he would stay in the football, and as it turned out, Southern University is a tight ends coach. And from what I was told the other day by a good friend of mine on his podcast every Saturday, Coach McNair is really comfortable. He's funny. And from what I'm hearing, he's the same Coach McNair at Southern, the same fun guy that he was at Alcorn. All right. We got about 30 seconds. How do we listen to you? How do we find your content? Um, well, I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we're ex um, Charles Edmond on Facebook. Uh, X Tall Man Radio, and I post interviews and our station, WPRL.org. Check us out. We got gospel, we got blues, we got sports, we got news. <laughs> we got it all. Check it out. Absolutely. Charles, thank you so much for joining us.